Well, welcome once again to Dog on RV and Travels with My Girls. It's just a typical northwest spring day, thick, overcast, cool, damp, drizzle, rain, and uh, traffic. Uh, believe me, I've tried to go places and find quiet, but it, it doesn't work. There's just too many people roaming around these days, um, not at work not at school and uh, I've tried getting rid of all the background noises with my editing program but then my voice ends up talking like hey like this or like this or like this and it's just too freaky so when you hear the background noise um, please think of a rolling river in the background passing through as you walk down it and maybe that'll make up for the constant the noise of civilization in the background. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to get on to my 12 essentials I think you should have for your dog when you guys go to campgrounds. So let's start out with probably what I think is the most important. Number one, the first aid kit. Now I've got the Roughwear first aid kit. I bought it as a basic first aid kit. You know, your typical bandages, salves, goo, and I added to it so it is ready to use for whatever territory, state, uh, environment that the girls and I plan on passing through in our travels. So it's constantly changing. I also have it that I take with us when we go backpacking or camping up into the high mountains. We're getting out of the hills, to the car, down a dirt road, and to a vet somewhere might take an hour or so. So we're always prepared no matter where we're at. And number two, if you have a pet, there are some breeds that have breed-related uh, medical issues that might pop up they can or they can't and you always want to be sure you have more than enough medication for your dog for the length of your trip the last thing you want to do is have just enough and either you spill it or the dog spills it and then you're short and the dog goes without its medication for a day or two or longer so always have more than enough medication to cover the time you'll be gone Another important thing, since the girls and I travel in a very, very compact 19-foot camper van, RV, is water. They need to keep hydrated on our travels. I looked around and there's all kinds of spill-proof water bowls that are, to me, some of them are like sippy cups for little kids. But I needed something that could withstand any kind of treatment my two 50 pound dogs could give it and I found this one it's by prestige pet products and the thing I like about this is it's got something I haven't seen in others it's got a little plate in here that floats on the top of the water which only allows so much water to come up through it as the dogs drink so it's not just a big bowl of water with a little lip here that can slosh back and forth, whether or not it does spill out. It only affords the dog as much water as they're going to drink at that time. And we've had this for a year now. It's been on a month long trips in the RV over very bumpy, dirty, rut roads up in the mountains. And it hasn't spilled at all. So. I am very pleased with this product. <clears throat> and another thing, because we're in such a compact quarters when we travel, space is at a premium. So I found this. This is by Mr. Peanuts, and it is a collapsible dog bowl. Now, these. I look for things that are well built because my dogs 
are uh, pretty active and they can be pretty rough on things. So when I look at things, I look at them closely. And this has put up with all kinds of abuse being shoved across the ground, uh, carried out of the RV, and it hasn't ripped, tore, or anything. So these are great. I got one for each dog, different colors. You know, they can't have the same thing, just like kids. So when they're done, just collapse it. I hang it on the wall where I put them so they're readily accessible and out of the way. Something good to have. Kate, what are you doing? That stays there. Another thing every responsible pet owner should have is a little container and poo bags. Always have plenty of poo bags because you don't know how fast your dog's going to go through one of these rolls. This one I have, it's got a little strap here that I can put on my belt loop or belt or anywhere, my backpack, and then just easily pull one out at a time. And to refill it, I just get this started like toilet tissue, stick it in here, pull the first one out a little, and I'm ready to go. So these are important. Nobody wants to step in your dog's crap. And you should have enough self-respect for yourself and your dog to clean up after them. A lot of people I've seen on trails will clean these things up, put them in the baggie, and leave them on the trail. Like, come on, people. It's in a bag. It's tied shut. It's not going to crawl out into your backpack and contaminate everything. Some people are just too lazy or too finicky, I swear. But put them in a baggie and put them in your backpack in another baggie if you're that paranoid. And it's fine. My dogs carry their own backpacks when we hike. So they carry their own crap, their own water, and their own food. Problem solved. Okay, let's move on. You also want a good six-foot leash. Now, a lot of people have those extendable leashes on a string. And I guess that's okay. However, I was at a campground in Arizona once a lady had that and a coyote came out of the bush grabbed her dog and was gone with it and that little rope leash didn't do squat if she had something like this at least she could have pulled back and maybe saved her dog's life so if you're a real responsible dog owner and you truly value your dog's safety, get this, throw those cheapo retractable cords out. Another thing, you see all these dog harnesses that are like straps on them, something like maybe Spartacus would have worn in the movie, you know? And you start thinking like, is that really that comfortable, having straps all over you? Ask your wife how she likes those bra straps tightened around her. I bet she doesn't like that at all. What I have here is a rough wear dog harness. It's insulated, padded, easy to take off and on. It's got adjustable hooks. And it's sized for the breed and weight of your dog so you want to get the right one because they only expand so big compared to the dog they're supposed to fit on they got a nice really metal loop here it's all double stitched extremely strong i know this because my parents ran a auto glass and upholstery shop for 40 years which i worked as an upholsterer in for a short time so i always look for good quality stitching and manufacturing. And rough wear, I think, is one of the top of the line. So if you want something good, something that's gonna last as long as your dog's alive, I suggest one of these, not those crappy little strap things that are gonna bind your dog and be wrapped around it like a tourniquet. 
So this is my suggestion. You can also get these with uh, reflective tape on, or better yet, save a penny, buy the reflective tape yourself, put it on, maybe have a friend sew it on, and you've added extra safety to this. You can also do it to your leash, you know? You don't have to pay all that extra money just for a cheap piece of reflective tape when you can go out, bite yourself, and have it put on by someone else or yourself if you can sew. <clears throat> Another thing is treats. Bring a couple bags of your dog's favorite treats. These are the treats I use with the girls. They love these things. They're little tidbits. I use them when I'm training them for rewards and that. And it works great. Kate, fetch. Where's the ball? Fetch the ball. Get the ball. Come on. Get the ball. Another thing is bring some of their favorite toys. Now, I used to let the dogs play with this all the time. It's for tugging and that. But then they started eating the string. And when I went out to clean up after them in the yard, I thought, oh my God, my dog's got worms. Because I saw all these things mixed in with it. And my dogs have never had worms of any type. I take very good care of them, feed them very well. I'm very attentive to their health needs. But when I saw stuff like this in that, I panicked. And then I took a closer look at it, you know? Part of my science background, I dissect things, check things out. And I was looking at it and say, wait a minute, that's no worm. That's strands of rope. So I don't let them just chew these things up and eat them anymore. <laughs> but I do play tug of war with them. Another thing, I used to spend a lot of money getting those big fluffy things, you know, that you find in a toy. I was just looking at a squ squirrels. I've got squirrels around here running loose. Um, I used to buy those expensive toys in the pet shop that had all the fluff and crinkly stuff in them. And the first thing the dogs would do is tear the guts out of them. And then they'd play with them for months. Well, hell, I saved my money. I'll buy the flat ones I call roadkill toys. And they'll play with these things for months and months and months. And that's no mess because there's nothing to pull out of them. But they still enjoy them. Now, I had another ball here, a little glow-in-the-dark ball that was a, a hardcore that the dogs love. I can play with that during the day and the evenings and nights. And then the nighttime, if they don't find it, at least I can see it to find it. So it's not a loss. Another thing, I got some of these, they're called e-bags, you know, use them for clothes or whatever. And these things are great. You get these on, uh, this is uh, Amazon. And you get these in all shapes and sizes and colors. And I get these things to organize a lot of my own clothes and stuff when I'm packing my RV. Also, it's great for putting all your knickknacks in for your dogs. Now this has some of their tennis balls, poopy bags. It's got uh, lint rollers for a lint roll because the dogs shed. And it's got a, in a baggie an extra 25 foot long leash that in some places you can't let your dog run loose, but 25 foot leash, boy, that gives them a large area to roam around and explore with you still in control of them. So I like these things, they're great. They can pack your RV much neater, more compact and organized and have everything right at your touch. Another thing is when you're in campgrounds, which this video is all about, you can have a couple of different things. I've seen people that go out and get a separate ID tag with just their dog's name on it and their cell phone instead of one that has their complete address and everything else. Well, instead of that, if you're in a campground, you're going to be in a campsite assigned to you. The best idea I've seen is get these paper key tags. You get them in a little bundle like this, stationary store, whatever, and just pull one out, put your campsite number on one side, your phone number on the other, and attach it to your dog's tag with the phone number and license. And if the dog does get loose, 
people are going to find it. We can look at this, say, hey, you belong to Campsite 25. Here's your phone number or the cell number of your owners. And they can call you and say, hey, we found your dog. We'll bring it right over to your campsite. And boom, your dog's found. Now, I learned this the hard way because my dogs, when we were camping at Mammoth Hot Springs once, uh, they have these little ground squirrels all over the place. And Sarah became very fascinated with those critters. And somehow, because I didn't have the collar on snug enough, she was able and so determined to go after those little ground squirrels, she squeezed her head right out of the collar. Well, luckily, what I had done is prior to going to our campsite, I had brought both dogs up to the registration booth, to the rangers, introduced the dogs to the rangers, let the dogs get to meet the rangers. So if they did get away, at least the rangers knew me, they knew the dogs, they knew what they looked like, they knew their type. Well, that came in extremely handy this time. I went up, reported my dogs missing. <clears throat> Within five minutes, they were down there in their vehicle helping me get more information. And I looked behind me and all of a sudden, Sarah comes traipsing down the trail right back to me. She'd lost interest in the critters and had decided to come home. So that was, oh, that was wonderful. It proved to me that my dogs are well trained that even though they might take off because their instincts sometimes overrun their uh, training, they do snap out of it, look around and say, whoa, I better get back home. And they come back to where they know their home is, where they're safe and sound, where I'm at, where Kate's at, and where the food's at. So these things are great. They're a quick and easy fix in case your dog gets lost to know that your dog can be found, will be found, and returned directly to your campsite. Another thing which I didn't bring out here in the rain is their bedding. Now, the girls have a blue mat that goes in their old kennel run cage. And I also got another insulated mat made by Chuck It that comes in a stuff sack and they love both of those. And I just throw those down in the uh, RV when we're driving in between the seats. And Kate sits shotgun in the passenger seat. That's always been her spot. And Sarah will come up and just lay in between the seats with us. And she really enjoys that. She'll compete with Kate for the bedding in here rather than sleeping on the uh, couch with the uh, little dog cover on it. So... I think that about does this video on what I think is important to bring when you go camping at your campgrounds to keep your dog happy, to keep your dog safe. And we will see you guys again with my 12 essentials for long-term camping on the road. Okay? So I got to go see what's going on with all these squirrels. I think they're... Uh, starting to gang up on me. We got gray squirrels, red squirrels, we got all kinds of birds. Uh, keeps the dogs busy, but they don't mind. Squirrels just sit up here in these trees and laugh at them. I think it really makes the dogs even matter. <laughs> so, again, from typical rainy Washington state, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll be seeing you. Take care, safe trip, and Woof, woof.